So Molly, take me inside. An aspiring and ascending artist like yourself, how do you understand dreams now that things are happening for you in a way that might be different from when you were a little girl? I mean, I think reality really kicks in to see the behind the scenes of this industry. And I had a very naive take on how things worked when I was younger. And so now um, that I see the behind the scenes, like obviously everything's a bit more um, realistic. Like I need to take a lot of things into account. But it also makes things feel reachable, you know, like it's not just a dream now, it really feels like a career path and something that I can keep building upon. So tell me what you've learned about yourself through that process, because I do find it fascinating when we're young and we're dreaming of the things that just resonate for us. Mm -hmm. There is a bit of a transition when the reality kicks in and the work ethic starts to build, right? And you see the business of the creative uh, element that you want to partake in. So what have you learned about yourself as really the business side of Molly as opposed Mm. to the artist side? I've learned to um, really trust my gut feeling Mm. with things and with people especially and find the people that I work well with and then ride with those people. So yeah, I think I've just learned to trust myself also really built in confidence over the years because you need to uh, really believe in what you do to be able to make things happen go into rooms with confidence without being cocky or without letting the ego dictate things but really just stand behind what I do Um, and that's taken time to learn to do really and to grow the confidence to do that but I'd say that's those are the main lessons. It sounds a little bit like getting comfortable in your own skin if that phrase applies. Absolutely and I think so I moved to Berlin for music I was still quite young at the time I was um, 18 left my small town going to a big city I was still really learning a lot about myself and finding out what I really liked and that kind of journey also happened within the music that I was writing you know like along the way I had to kind of discover um, what things really excited me and what kind of music I really wanted to make and how was your writing impacted I would think with mm. by moving that it's that classic. Mm. It's it's also a very American tale as well, going from that small town right, yeah. to the to the big you know bright lights, let's say of New York City. Right. I would think that the song your songwriting would be impacted. There'd be maybe a different Absolutely. depth to it. Yeah, I think just mainly from the experiences that I had, you know, like I really was thrown into the deep end in a way, and I was very lonely at first yeah. when I moved to the city. I completely fell head over heels for someone, got super heartbroken. So those kind of big moments in my life inspired a lot of the music that I wrote. And if I had kind of stayed in in my hometown, I mean, who knows what would have happened, but I probably wouldn't have had the same experiences. I probably wouldn't have had to grow up so quickly. So the music I would have been writing would not have been the same. Tell, tell me about sort of where you are in this stage of still being amazed at sort mm. of the progression of your career. And, oh, and yeah. those elements where it feels comfortable now. It doesn't mean that it's from an, a, a place mm-hmm. of ego at all. It's just you're, you're comfortable. You, yeah. you, it doesn't, the stage isn't too big or bright for you. Tell me a little bit about that. I think, of course, I've grown comfortable with what I do. And I'm, as I said, I'm more confident with what I do. But I do find it really important to stay challenged and to always, you know, be looking ahead and trying to go for the next thing um, that's what really keeps me excited and and keeps me driven so I'm often kind of like two steps ahead in my head of where I want to go and and um, sometimes I think it's important to take a step back and to be like wow I've really achieved this much that I would never have dreamed would really be possible like it's actually coming true so it's important to acknowledge that but also stay driven and keep keep moving keep forward. pushing yeah so take me into the take me into the family kitchen so what are the conversations like with with family about oh. 
what, what you're doing, what you're achieving? Is it uh, always fun? It's not oh just gosh. sort of the artist. It's it's the entire family. It's the friends. It's right. the community. What what has that transition been like, or that that uh, that journey? I've been very lucky to have a very supportive family that they were okay with me not taking the traditional route of things and I, I didn't study um, anything like I was planning to. I ended up just fully going into music and I was really lucky that they were supportive of that. I think it's hard to explain really what I'm doing because for someone from the outside it's not as easy to understand how the industry really works and this whole songwriting game, like people just hear songs on the radio, they don't actually fully understand how all of it happens. So it's been a whole process of me explaining that to Educating my them. friends and family, <laughs> yeah. But I think now, because it's been a while, they, they get it and, and they're very supportive and like following what I do, so it's really lovely. Now, you may not want to share this, but I'd be so curious as to What's the big dream, the dream that you keep in the back of your mind that you often only sort mm. of engage with when you close down at night, when you lay your head on the pillow? Can you share a little bit about that dream? I think the biggest dream I have is really to share my music with as many people as possible, especially when it comes to live. Like I would love to play big festivals and do a world tour one day if it's possible like that would be the absolute dream because there's nothing quite like the feeling of performing your own music to people and to get their live reaction and just where sharing do you, where that do you feeling. feel it in your body I think people who've been on stage mm. there's a shared energy that just yeah it's like a, a, a jolt of power it's like we're sitting on Exshore, right 100% electric like the, the power of of a boat in that regard. Tell me about the energy yeah. or where you feel it in your body when you're performing. Oh gosh. It's just vibrating throughout. Like I don't think I could pinpoint it to a certain place. It's just this absolute high. You're just on this rush and you don't quite realize it until you come off stage, you know, like that's when the come down hits. But in the moment, it's just like everything's hypersensitive and it just feels amazing. It's really hard to describe just like... Is it, be is it easier to describe it as an addiction or an obsession to have that feeling? Oh, oh gosh, it's a bit of both really because it is <laughs> so addicting. Um, and once you've done it, you just want to do it again. And it's also can definitely be an obsession. Um, I think it's funny though because every time... I tend to get so nervous and I'm so scared. You do? And yeah, before I'm just like, oh my God, like these feelings, it's so difficult to handle my nerves and and it's, it feels like this mountain to to, to get over. Um, but then the minute you come off stage, it's like, right, I want to do that again. I want to put myself through <laughs> all of those nerves Back on the amusement ride. Again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So well, it's, it's going to be incredible to see your career grow and to be able to say that, that I knew you when, when we were on this incredible uh, <laughs> boat here, uh, at shore so here, and, and on such a beautiful day here in Stockholm. Continued success, yeah. and it'll be fun to, to watch you grow. Oh, thank you very much. It was lovely chatting. Thank you.